everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm back with another fall video where I'm sharing five all new fall DIYs. As usual, each project is easy and affordable to create. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it. And now let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. For the first DIY today, I'm going to be starting with this five inch unfinished wood square block. And this one did come from Michaels and it's from the Make Market brand. I first started painting it with my Pueblo colored paint, but I ended up not liking it. So I'm just going to be painting over it here with my folk art matte acrylic paint and the color yellow ochre. To give the edges of my block a little bit of a distressed look, I used a little bit of this dark brown paint around all of the edges. The color I'm using is from Folk Art and the color Burnt Umber. Next, I'm going to be using this three inch unfinished wood square. These you can pretty much get at any craft store. And here I'm just going to be staining mine with my Folk Art wood tint in the color Walnut. Then I'm going to be using hot glue on the back side to attach it to the center of my yellow colored block. I'm going to be using these Hello Autumn Woodward cutouts. These I did cut out myself on my Xtool M1 machine, but if you don't have a machine like that to cut out your own words, they have so many out in craft stores right now for fall, so you can probably get some really great fall words from there. The one I am using here for the S SVG file, I did purchase from Etsy and I will have a link to that down in my description box. I am gonna be painting both words hello and autumn with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. Another little detail piece that I'm gonna be using are one of these wood leaves. I think these are so cute and I just recently picked them up from Joanne Fabrics. I just took one of the leaves off of the wire that it was attached to and then here I'm just getting everything lined up where I want it to be before I start gluing everything down. And as you can see here, I used hot glue to to attach everything. Then for the last little detail piece, I used about two strands of a raffia and just created a really simple small bow. I thought it would be a really cute detail to add to the bottom of my leaf. So once I have my little raffia bow made, I just cut off the long ends and then attached the bow on top of the leaf using some hot glue. Here's the piece all finished. This one was super easy to do and it is the perfect accent piece because you can pretty much put it anywhere, a table, a tiered tray, a shelf, it's just the perfect size. Next up is DIY number two. For this one, I'm gonna be starting with these two wooden hoops and these ones are both from Dollar Tree. And the first thing I'm doing is staining both of the hoops with my bulk art wood tint in the color Walnut. I'm then using hot glue on the bottom of the smaller hoop and attaching it on the inside of the larger hoop. Next, I'm gonna be using this scrap piece of wood that's five and a half inches in length, and I'm gonna be using that same walnut colored wood tint to stain this entire piece. For some of the florals I'm gonna be using are these orangish color ones here, and they are from Hobby Lobby. They're about $2.99 a piece, and then I always get them when they're 40% off. I'm cutting them off of their stems, and then I'm gonna be hot gluing one on the left side and then one on the right side. And then once I have those added, like you can see here, I'm gonna add two more. So these ones are just gonna be overlapping the first ones that I had attached, again, on the right and left side. Then to add some dimension, I'm gonna be using this cream color one. It's the same pick as the last ones, only in a different color. And I'm just gonna be cutting small pieces of the stems and I'm gonna be hot gluing them in the middle of the pieces that I just added, just to give this wreath a little bit of dimension. And I really love these two colors together. I thought it would be super cute if I added some of these white berries. These are from Hobby Lobby and came from this pick here. I ended up just cutting two bundles of the berries off and I'm gonna be using one on each side of the wreath, just kind of hot glued in the center of those other colors. 
Then to add even more dimension, I thought it would be really cute to add some of these corn stalks. The corn stalks I got also from Hobby Lobby and I'm just taking a strip of the corn stalk and then just tearing it. And I did sections of three. So I did three little strips together and then I would twist the very bottom so that they would stick together. So you kind of have like three in one. And then I just flipped my wreath over and hot glued that little bundle right on the back side. And I did the exact same thing for the other side of the wreath as well. Next, I wanted to add this thankful wooden word cutout, and this one is from Hobby Lobby. And I'm gonna be painting this with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. This did come in a pack with a couple different fall unfinished wood words. And then once I have it painted, I'm just using some hot glue so that I can attach it across the smaller hoop here in the center. And then I'm gonna be using hot glue on the bottom of my hoops and just attaching it on my wooden piece. I'm also going to be adding some of this pumpkin ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'm just creating a really simple bow here and then I did want the tail ends of my bow to be in a V shape. So here I'm just cutting them into a V and then I'm hot gluing my bow right in the center of the top of my wreath. For the very last step, I'm gonna be using some of these pumpkin pine cones. These ones are from Dollar Tree. I just use one of the orange small pumpkins and I'm hot gluing that right in the center of the hoops on the bottom of the little stand that I have. And then I'm hot gluing two pine cones on each side of that pumpkin. And here is the standing wreath all finished. I think this one is super cute. And what I love most about this one is it's a little bit different than your average wreath. Next up is a DIY number three. For this one, I'm gonna be using this unfinished wood coaster set. This came from Hobby Lobby. It's $6.99 regular price, but I got it when it was 40% off. So a really good price for unfinished wood. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is just staining the entire base piece here with my folk art tint, wood tint in the color walnut. No surprise there, it's my favorite. And then once I have the base all stained, I'm then gonna be staining all six of these round coasters with that same wood tint. For all six of the coasters, I am gonna be using these mini fall themed stencils. These ones I did pick up from Amazon and I will have a link to them down in my description box. I just think that they are so cute. And again, they're the perfect size for the coasters. So what I did is just took the stencil and placed it right in the center of my round coaster. And what I like to do is use painter's tape around all four sides of the stencil just to hold it in place so it doesn't move around while I'm painting. For the paint, I'm gonna be using Waverly's chalk paint in the color ivory, and I'm just using a medium sized stencil brush to apply the paint. After the paint was all dry, I then removed all of the painter's tape and the stencil. And then I did the same steps for the next five remaining coasters, obviously with different stencils. And I just used that same Waverly paint in ivory as well. Since these are coasters, I wanted to make sure to add a sealer to the top of them. And the sealer that I used is the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Enamel Sealer. I did three coats of this to make sure that they're all nice and sealed and ready to use. These are what the coasters look like all finished. I think that they turned out absolutely beautiful and they were really easy and inexpensive to create. Moving right along into DIY number four. For this one, I'm gonna be using this sign that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance for $4.49 and I just wanted to make it over since it has really good bones to it. It has a really nice thick frame, only I wanted to darken it up a bit. So here, you probably guessed it, I'm using my folk art wood tin in the color walnut to stain the entire frame. Then for the inside of the sign, I wanted to have a really fun fall color, so I'm painting it in the folk art matte acrylic paint in yellow ochre, and I did have to do a couple different paints of paints, a couple different coats of this paint to cover up those words. 
Then I wanted to give the inside wood slats a little bit of distressing. So I'm using the folk art paint in the color burnt umber and I'm just dry brushing that on all of the inside little edges. Next, I'm gonna be using these unfinished wood letters from Hobby Lobby. This one you can see spells out the word apples, but I'm also gonna be spelling out the word flannels, cider, pumpkins, leaves, and hay rides for all of the words and letters. I'm painting each one with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. Once I have all of the letters painted, I have the words all created in all of their spaces, getting them exactly where I want them to be, and then I'm gonna go through and hot glue each one of the letters down. Here's what the sign looks like all finished. I really, really love how this one turned out. I love the really bright colors and it fits perfect with my fall decor this year. Now for the fifth and final DIY for today, I'm gonna to be starting with one of these five inch square unfinished wood blocks from Michaels and I'm gonna be using my favorite wood tint in walnut to stain the entire piece. I'm then gonna be using a sheet of this pumpkin printed craft paper from Hobby Lobby and since I need to measure it down to size, I'm just gonna be placing the wood block on the back side of my paper and then I'm just gonna be tracing around it with a marker. I am gonna be doing it a little bit larger than the wood block so that I have a little bit of extra paper to fold over the edges. Once I had it all measured and traced out, I then just cut it out with some scissors. I'm then using some Mod Podge on the wood and just spreading that out with a brush. I did end up using a little bit too much glue, but it's better than not enough. Then once I had the glue on, I placed my paper right over top and then just smoothed out any bubbles. After the glue dried down a bit, I just used some sandpaper and started sanding the paper around all of the edges of my wood and it just gives you a really nice, clean, crisp cut. Then I'm gonna be using these wood trim pieces. You can get this at Lowe's and I already cut mine down to fit around the entire outside edge of my square. And then here, I'm just using that walnut wood tint to give them all a nice stained look. I'm then using hot glue to attach all of the wood trim pieces. The two longer ones are gonna be on the top and the bottom, and then the two shorter ones are gonna be my side pieces. I'm gonna be using this Hello Wood Word Cutout. This one I did cut out myself on my Xtool M1 machine, and it is an SVG cut file that I did purchase on Etsy, and I'll have a link to that down in my description box. But you can also buy these Hello Wood Word Cutouts at pretty much any craft store, and then also I cut out these letters to spell out pumpkin. You can buy individual letters at your local craft store as well if you cannot cut them out. And again, I'll have a link to the Etsy shop that I purchased the SVG files from. For the hello word and then all of the letters to spell out pumpkin, I am using my walnut wood tint. For the very last step, I'm just using some hot glue to attach my hello and pumpkin word right in the center of my sign. And here is the sign all finished. I really love how simple this one is. And again, it was super easy and inexpensive. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. Please be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. As always, I would love to know which project from today's video was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching.